We've spent the last year looking at the businesses that are making it today. We interviewed leaders from around the world on the relationship between profit and purpose. Conscious capitalism, liberating the heroic spirit of business. It's a clarion cry to entrepreneurs to make a difference. Its author is the millionaire founder of Whole Foods, John Mackey. With a worldwide empire, the Healthy Living Supermarket was founded on the principle that you can be a commercial success without selling your soul. Today, Whole Foods is a beacon for the best in business. Entrepreneurs are fundamentally very creative individuals. They have a sense of higher purpose. They're not in it primarily to make money. That's a secondary concern that comes from. They're, they're fulfilling their dreams and their passions. You've talked about entrepreneurs as the dream creators. You talk a lot about mission um, in, in the book. If you were to set the tone for what these guys should be thinking about in terms of taking this movement to the next stage, what's the next step? Hmm, that's a good question. The next step is to, is to create conscious businesses. And nothing succeeds like success. And uh, as we build more conscious businesses, what will end up happening is the ideas will spread and uh, the consciousness will grow and the, the paradigms of business will shift. It'll take, a, it'll take a generation, but in 20 years, the world's going to be a very different place. There is a vehemence. There is a real sort of sense of almost anger in some of the, some of the pieces you read about your thinking. I was reading uh, a lady in the Huffington Post. She was saying that you're, you know, you're too simplistic. You've got, you know, that the ideas don't stand up to real life scrutiny. Does it worry you that, or, or does that actually sort of, is that kind of proof positive that you're breaking through, that you've got this kind of critic? We wrote the book for the millennials. We wrote it for the younger entrepreneurs. They're the ones that are going to create the conscious businesses that change, that change the world. So what do I care what some journalist thinks somewhere? I don't really care. The last thing my mother said to me before she died was, John, would you please give up this grocery store business and promise me you'll go back to school <laughs> yeah. and get finish and job. get a degree? <laughs> my mother desperately wanted me to be a lawyer or a doctor. Life isn't very, sh it's short. It's really so short. You'll, 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 everybody will realize this someday how it just goes by very rapidly. And it's too short to do anything less than follow your heart. It's just, why, why would you settle for anything less than that? The next morning, I met up again with John Mackey, this time at his Whole Foods Global HQ. I'd like to go right back to the start, to the 25-year-old John Mackey that set this up. I mean, give us a sense of what was going through your mind when you started to open the doors of the first store. It just having my own business was exciting. Right. We created something, and it was ours, and uh, we loved it. But there were some dramatic chapters. I mean, tell us about the flood, for example. It was a catastrophe. We were at eight feet of water. Renee actually closed the store up that night. She swam out the store. Wow. There were all these people helping us clean up the store, I kind of vaguely recognized. Right. Who, who were they? Were well, they friends, were, family, they customers? Were, they were customers and they were neighbors that uh, had heard about what happened to Whole Foods and they came in to lend a hand. And when I later on encountered the term stakeholders and that all stakeholders matter in a business, I mean, I recognized right away that was true. This is, I guess, was the antecedents of conscious capitalism and the idea of being this sort of, this idea of the firm of endearment. Absolutely. They, we, have, we have higher purpose, we have core values, we have a mission, and we're, we have the courage to live by that mission and make hard choices at times, and, and we're committed to doing right by our customers and, and doing right by all of our stakeholders. So I do think people, if, if you do business with integrity, it takes a while, but people come to see that you have integrity, and we tend to trust people or organizations that we judge are trustworthy, that have integrity, that do what they say, try to be honest, don't try to take advantage of them. How does it feel sort of sitting at the top of that organization today? Do you still recognize everything that you wanted in the business? Are there some things that you still feel you've got to do? I kind of feel like we've barely gotten started. Right. Um, there's major health care crisis, not just in the United States, but now increasingly all over the world. Uh, Americans are 69% overweight, 36% obese. It's not the government that's going to solve these problems. It is through our creativity that human beings will solve our problems. So if you, if you think of entrepreneurs not just in terms of business entrepreneurs, but we need entrepreneurs, and social entrepreneurs. The way I see it is, is that if, if there's a way to make money at it, business is the right uh, way to approach it. I mean, business, entrepreneurs, competition in the marketplace, essentially capitalism, uh, is the best way to approach many of the challenges and problems we have. John Mackey, thank you very much indeed. Okay, Michael, thank, thank you. you.
Mission makes the case for a new and optimistic era for business. That business can and should be a force for good. That purpose gives entrepreneurs the drive to succeed, creating a shared belief that unites teams, stakeholders and customers alike. You can find out more in our book, Mission, How the Best in Business Breakthrough.